Are you present or are you tending? Today we start a new series, Tending the Altar. And this question is very relevant to our course of study. So let's jump right into learning, growing, and ministering. So first of all, the word attend, which some of you might be thinking, well, it should be attending the altar, um, is to be present. And boy, you know, we need to be present at the altar. But when I first started working on this series, I was kind of torn between those two words, attend or tend. And I, I literally asked God, which, which word is right, God? Which, which word do you want me to speak? And he really took me to the word tending and it just impressed on me the importance of tending the altar. Um, and, and then as I began to study out the definition of the word, it became very clear that apparently God knows what he's doing because uh, it was the right word for, for this series. So we're going to talk about that. And I just want to lay some groundwork here. First of all, this ties very closely to the series we just finished, An Atmosphere for Miracles. And in fact, one of the last lessons I taught there, um, Are You Prepared?, uh, is a, is a great lead into this, um, because we talked about being prepared in the context of an atmosphere for miracles. Now we're, we're really talking about tending the altar. And, uh, this is going to have some elements of nerdiness, I'm sure, where we'll get into, um, some definitions and that kind of thing. But there's also just some really practical hands-on daily living kinds of issues that we're going to be addressing in this series. So, with that said, the word tend um, is, I'm going to, now I'm going to get techie for you for a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm going to deal with some definitions. And the word tend uh, as an intransitive verb, and don't leave me yet. I know some of you are like, what intransitive verb? I'm out of here. Uh, this is English. Um, this is actually Bible, but uh, here's the English aspect to this. An intransitive verb, which is a verb, it's an action word that has no object. So it's just an action. And as an intransitive verb, tend is to pay attention. Um, apply oneself. Act as an attendant or serve. And then an archaic meaning of the word tend is to listen. Well, you know, we're talking about Bible things, and those seem to be able to transition through time. So the idea that the word tend here uh, is to listen um, may not be that far off the, the beaten path in terms of what the uh, original intent of the word is. Or it can be, uh, there's an obsolete, uh, obsolete version of the word, <clears throat> which would mean await. And there's an aspect of that that could be a applicable as well. So those, those are the intransitive verbs. Those are where we don't have an object, just an action. Okay. Uh, then the transitive verb, where there's a direct object, something that the action is directly related to, uh, would be to apply oneself to the care of or watch over. So what's the what's the object the altar to apply oneself to the care of the altar to watch over the altar um so when we talk about tending the altar the question that immediately has to come to mind as we start looking at how does this word work is who are those charged with responsibility to tend the altar And I said, gosh, a bazillion years ago when we started this class, which um, we, we never talk about the name of the class. I'm the only one who ever pays any attention to it. Uh, but when we started this class many, many years ago, uh, it was named Home Builders Class. Originally, when we started the class, it was to be a class for young marrieds because we were seeing problems in marriages. And so it was designed 
to to address young marrieds. And then it kind of became the adult Sunday school class a few years later. <clears throat> and um, I've never changed the name of the class. It's still Home Builders because you know what? We're we still need to build godly homes. We still need to build godly relationships. That still needs to be the focus. And when I when I started the class, I said, you know, here's the thing. Um, once we start teaching in this class, you're going to have a greater responsibility. Because the Bible tells us, them who know much, much is expected. And I intend for our teaching to help you know more, in which case there's going to be more expected of you. And... Um, so this is right along those same lines. This is a situation with, if we're talking about tending the altar, and those who are charged with the responsibility to tend the altar are priests. And you can say, oh, well, you know, that lets me off the hook. I'm not a priest, therefore I don't have to, you know, worry about any of this stuff. But see, we're all called to minister in some capacity. You know, there's people who are pastors there's people who are evangelists and prophets and you know they have different roles but we all have a responsibility to show forth Jesus Christ that's our testimony and we all have the ability as God uses us to minister and and we, you know we maybe we'll, we'll look at it, the definition of minister or ministering as we go forward as well. But we all have a certain responsibility. And as it ties to the series we just completed, if we want to see an atmosphere for miracles, if we want to see miracles, we need to be prepared to do our part. So when we talk about tending <clears throat> the altar, I see this as a, as a, a place we're going. You know, uh, last year, the very beginning of the year, before all the COVID stuff really kicked in, we talked about afraid not, basically having peace and and difficult times and all the reasons and hows and what fors about that. And then the COVID thing hit, and I think it was extremely timely. Uh, then. We followed that up with a number of, uh, you know, number of lessons on the series and atmosphere for miracles because I do believe that's what's going to happen. And tending the altar is an extension, really, of that. Not necessarily a long series, but a series that addresses the responsibility and addresses the altar and how that functions. And you, you know, you might say, well, how is the altar? relevant in 2021 we don't do sacrifices of animals and things on the altar how is this even pertinent but bear with me because i think over the next few weeks it's going to become very relevant to you and it's going to open up some understanding for you the priests of the old testament had three main functions the first was to assist in accessing god now, in the, in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle and all that, <clears throat> there was, you know, the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies. And because of the way the altar was laid out with the, the three different sections, part of the job of the priest was in accessing God, assisting in the, in the cleansing on, and the outer court and inner court experiences. And then the, the priest was the one who went into the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God was. And, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, the, the veil that, that separated the Holy of Holies was rent. And that means we have access directly to God, who is our, our great high priest. But we don't want to lose sight of what the responsibilities here in tending the altar were for the, the priest of the Old Testament. In other words, when we talk about his responsibilities, first was assist in accessing God. Well, we have the ability to go to Jesus directly. We have the ability to go to the great high priest. But sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need someone to help us 
recognize our need for God or help us recognize how we can access God, that he is available and does hear our cry. We need to kind of walk through that process. And, you know, the, the Catholic Church has the, the priest in a role that still is um, in, in assisting and accessing God, so to speak. And, you know, you go to the, the priest and ask for forgiveness and, he, you know, he, he tells you, you know, do penance or, you know, say so many Hail Marys or whatever. So they've kind of left that role in, in kind of that way. And, and we know that we can go directly to Christ. We know that Moses didn't enter the, the Holy Land because he didn't, he wasn't obedient. The, the miracle that he did in the desert where he struck the rock and water came forth, that's symbolic of when Christ was on the cross and they pierced his side and blood and water spilled out. But see, after he was on the cross, he didn't have to have his side pierced anymore. He'd already paid the price. So we can speak to God. And that's why Moses was supposed to speak to the rock. But he struck the rock. So uh, his his result was he didn't enter into the the, the Holy Land. So or the, you know, the promised land. So the reality is the priest, in terms of tending the altar, we're going to dial down on this in a few minutes, still has a certain responsibility in tending the altar with assisting and assessing, accessing God. The, the second function of the priest in the Old Testament was teaching. To teach. To teach to draw one closer to God. To teach in order to uh, assist in becoming more one with God. And that's still true today, and we'll talk about that in future weeks. And then, and then the third real function there was to seek out the will of God on a larger, what I would call corporate scale. In other words, when the nation needed to hear from God, the priest was supposed to go and, and hear from God. And we've really gotten far away from that in our land, which is you know, built on the idea of trusting God and, and um, those, those principles. And yet we've gotten away from the idea that uh, we would go to the church and get direction for our, our country. And that's sad. I think we're on a, on a bad path. And there are those in churches, those are in leadership who've really strayed from their responsibility. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's important that we look at the series, Tending the Altar. What are our responsibilities? What are we supposed to be doing around these things? So we'll be talking about that in future weeks. So let's go back and, and let's look at what is the purpose of the altar. Now, the Old Testament altar was a place where sacrifices were made, and there were a number of different sacrifices, and we'll, we'll expand on that in future weeks. But the, the altar was a place where there was a sacrifice made for sin, atonement for sin. Um, the atonement for sin, in, in, you know, there's where they, they had the animal that they prepared and they, they placed on the altar and sacrificed it to God to cover our sins, the shedding of blood. And we know that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. He came and, and he paid the price for our sins. And so you say, well, that's, that's no longer part of the altar. But see, it is. And, and in our modern churches today, we, a lot of us uh, don't even have a true you know, altar. There's, there's the, you know, the bench style altar that uh, many churches had for years. And then there's the square box uh, type altar that, that many churches and certainly many Assembly of God churches have had. I mean, it says, you know, this do in remembrance of me on the front of them and all that uh, that, that have existed. And we, we don't, in our church today, we don't have an, an altar like that set up at all. We have, uh, you know, a place we call the altar, but it's really just the front of the church and 
in the front of the platform, if you will. So you say, well, I don't really see how we need that. But see, we need that we need the ministry of the altar. We still need to come forward and confess our sins and we need to come forward and accept the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we can be cleansed from our sin. We, we still need that function of the altar and we still need people who tend the altar, those people that will assist in accessing God, that will assist you in getting where you need to be spiritually. That's still true today. That hasn't changed at all. And and so the first, pers- first purpose is salvation. Now, do you have to come to the front of the church in order to be saved? No. But for a lot of us, that's the, that's the easiest and best way for us to, to get it done. It's the right environment. It's the right statement. It's the right opportunity. And so God gives us that opportunity in our midst for us to ask people to come and be saved. And that's the first responsibility of those tending the altar is salvation and access to God. That's the first responsibility. But see, there's, there's some things that come with that. When we first started talking about this word tend, I said the transitive verb or the direct object form of the word is to apply oneself to the care of. So to apply oneself to the care of the altar. So if our first responsibility is, is, is the sacrifice, the, the, the salvation side of things at the altar, if our first responsibility then is to apply oneself to the care of that process, then if we're going to tend the altar, we need to take care of our own business. We need to, we need to have our heart and mind in the right place with God. We need to be paying attention to the details. Am I living a life that is going to support tending the altar? Or am I just trying to see what I can get away with? Or am I just trying to kind of, you know, fly along here a little bit and see what, see what happens? Or is it part of applying myself to my responsibility? I've talked to people in the past about the difference if you're going to if you're going to preach the difference and the change that has to take place in how you study God's word. It's one thing to study in order to feed yourself. It's one thing to study in order to get what you need for today. And we always need that. But it's a whole nother thing to study when you're going to give back. It's a whole nother thing to study so that you can give out. That's a whole different level of studying that you have to do. So you have a responsibility to learn to do that. Well, I can't live a life that is consumed by my own narcissism, by my own for me-ism, and expect to be an effective minister around the altar. My life speaks louder than my words. I need to pay attention to the life that I live so that I am uh, applying myself to the care of the altar. First and foremost, for salvation. I need, to, I need to live a life where I have made a decision, where I have, I have set myself aside for the purpose of the work at the altar. And you say, well, you know, I just sit in the fourth row on the left side, as, as Pastor Chris likes to say, I pay my share of the light bill. That's great. Absolutely fantastic. But God has a call for more on all of us. And when I stop looking one way and I start expanding how I'm looking at my life, and I realize I have a responsibility to do the job of tending the altar, Does it mean I come forward every week and I'm praying with people at the altar and doing all this? No, but it means that I have a life where my testimony can help tend the altar, where my testimony can help 
someone understand the sacrifice that Christ made, that someone can understand that there is hope, that there is an opportunity to get saved. I, I need to do that. Do I want to, you know, turn people into, you know, hyper legalistic? No. I just want us to be aware we have a responsibility to tend the altar. Every single one of us. There's not an exception. We have a responsibility to change the way we're thinking about our life. It's, it's part of the growth of a Christian. You know, the Bible tells us in, in John that when I was a child, I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, when I matured, I put away childish things. I need to recognize I have a responsibility to the altar. I have a responsibility to tend the altar. For what purpose? For salvation. First and foremost. Not exclusively, but first and foremost. It's a life of sacrifice. When you talk about somebody who goes into full-time ministry, somebody who's a, who's a pastor or an evangelist or, or whatever, they, they are setting aside, dedicating a part of their life to that task. And you say, well, you know, that's great. That's their 40 hour a week job. No, it's not. The, the, to be effective, it has to be a life of sacrifice. It's, it's every day. In my job, we talk about life in a fishbowl. Well, it's the same thing. It, there's always somebody watching. There's always somebody looking. And it's not, it's not you know, you got to watch out because God's watching and he's going to get you. God is watching. Not with the intent of getting you. With the intent of helping you, yes. But that's not the point. There's always somebody else watching whether you think they are or not. Always. There's always somebody watching to see, are you really what you say you are? Are you something different? And, and you know, you can say, well, you can get all caught up in, well, I, I don't know if I could handle that pressure. I, I, don't, I don't like, you know, that people are looking at me that way. Well, here's the reality. Make up your mind that I'm going to tend the altar. Make up your mind that I'm going to be part of living out that life. Change the way you think about how you live your life. God is a part of my life. No, God is your life. That's true whether you think so or not. Without him, you have nothing. With him, you have hope. With him, you have peace. With him, you have healing. With him, you have comfort. My, my wife was talking to somebody recently who, who was just, they, they said, you know, I'm, I'm so alone. And she said, you know, you can, you can turn to Jesus. And they said, well, I'm mad at God. Let me tell you something. His word says he'll never leave you or forsake you. You never have to be alone. Why? Because... I can come to him. I can come to him and say, I'm mad at you, God. I don't understand why this happened or that happened. And see, that's where those that tend the altar can help you. You come forward and say, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm mad at God. And they can help you understand how much God loves you. They can help you understand that there's a hope for your life, that there's a way for, for you to get through what you're going through. That's part of the process of tending the altar, leading one to salvation. And we do that when we change the way we think and it stops being about us and it starts being about him. That's really the key. Putting him first. Making him Lord in our life. So the first step, and, and you know, we're going to expand on this uh, over, the, over the, you know, the course of the series, but the first step Intending the altar is asking yourself that question. It's the title of our lesson series today. Present or tending? Am I just showing up or am I ministering? Do I come, do I come to the house of God with the idea of, hey, I'm here. All you people, I'm, you're so lucky I'm here. Or do we come with the idea of, you know what, I need to be tending the altar. I need to be looking for the opportunity for where God needs me to, to, to minister to someone. I need to be available for, for God to minister to someone. And in order to be available to tend the altar, I need to make sure I work out my issues 
Yes, there's times when we, you know, we're in a low spot or whatever, and we really need the ministry for us. But, you know, if we work those issues out the, the, as we mature as a Christian, if we work those things out so that we're in a right place, in a right heart, then we're ready to be used of God at any time. That ties to the previous lesson we did a, a few weeks ago on being prepared. But it's part of it. Am I just showing up or am I tending the altar? Am I just showing up or am I ready to minister? Am I just showing up or am I living a life that allows for my testimony to bring those to Christ? Am I helping them access God? Or am I living a life that's confusing because they don't even understand what, what I think or believe? Well, I thought they were Christian, but I'm not real sure. What kind of life am I living? And I would challenge you that the, the life we need to be living today is one to tend the altar. Not just attend, but tend have oneself applied to the care of, to watch over. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to lead those to Christ. We have a responsibility to live a life that is a, is a testimony. Do we screw up? Sure. But we keep a short account. When we make a mistake, we take it to God right away. You don't have to wait for Wednesday night. You don't have to wait for Sunday morning. You can take it to God right now. The faster you get to God with it, the better off you are. And we can get ourselves in a position where we're ready to tend the altar, where we're ready to minister. So we'll close out the lesson this morning with that simple question. Are you present or are you tending? Mm -hmm.